Hey, welcome back to the channel. I switched it up a little bit this week. This is a this is a React JS video. Um, I have an upcoming pro potential project. Had to do a wizard, and I hadn't written one in a while, so I said let's step back and just kind of familiarize myself with the updated uh, React hook form. Figure out if it's um, feasible to kind of manage the state using pull state and Ionic and React. So just to kind of cover once again these technologies, we're using React Hook Form version 7, uh, which is a great way to kind of manage forms. We're using pull state here, which is a very extremely lightweight um, state management utility. You basically set up your store, you get state out of the store, and then um, you update the store. You can do a bunch of other stuff, but for now, that's all I'm really using it for. And then finally, the source code for this project that I'm about to walk through is already posted on my GitHub. A link is in the video. And like I said, the purpose of this video is really to just walk through the code. I'm not gonna type it out, I'm just gonna walk through it and kind of explain it. And um, if there's any questions after you watch the video, leave a comment below and I'll try to follow up and answer your questions. Um, so let's get to the code. Oh, please make sure you like, subscribe, and share with your friends. Okay, so let me kind of put myself down here and kind of, you know, I don't know if you, I've posted the video as a short, but if you haven't seen it, it's pretty straightforward. We have a little progress bar at the top. Um, we do some basic checking so you can't move forward till you, till you fill the form out. So, Aaron. A R O N age 35. Yeah. Next, we move forward. We update the progress bar. We can still go back because we've saved our state. Um, place of birth DC, mother's maiden name, Smith S S M I T H. I can't even type. Uh, next, once again, updating the progress bar. Still can go back. Still can change your values. Uh, next, everything's saved. We have the nice animations. Get to our final page. Still confirmation. And then um, next to finish, and we have all of our values here. So that's kind of what this simple app does. And oh, one last. No. Yeah, that's what the simple app, app does. Let's kind of jump to the code now. Let's see if we can get as much space as we can to view. So, well, where shall we start? Let's start at app TSX. So here in the beginning of the app, this is your basic React program. Um, one thing you'll notice when you look at the source code is if you go to the readme, you can see all the commands that I use to get everything all set up. It's in the readme. All right, so back to app. Only interesting thing here is I've added the progress bar up at the top. So if we go back, that's the progress bar that we have across the top. I don't know why I have that value at 60, it should be zero. And so we update the progress bar. Here's just normal route management. We have a route for each one of the steps. We have a default route set to step one. So there's nothing special there. So that's the app TSX. So that's the route. So now let's uh, let's touch on the store because we're about to get into that. So if we go to my store, and this is pull state, I tried to use as much TypeScript as I could this time around to really start to get into it and, and stop using any as much as I could. So what I've done is I've created a separate interface for each one of the forms. So form step one, form step two, form step three, and the overall form values, I'm combining all of these um, interfaces to create one type that covers everything. And you notice the progress number is the one additional value that I have outside of each one of these that, that comprise the form values. And then with pull stakes, I, I, I am importing store from pull state. I set the type so it knows what the type of the state is, store is, so it knows what store looks like. I set the default values and then that's how we set up our store. And then because I want to be able to access everything in my Redux dev tools, I register in dev tools, I pass the name of the store, and you can visualize it in the dev tools. And so that's the store. So let's look at step one. 
And so if we go into step one, we have all of our imports, our imports from Reactive Form, our router to move around, some types from, or an interface from my store, and the overall store. For those who aren't familiar with React Hook Forms, uh, the, the kind of the, the key player in it is this use form hook. And um, out of the use form hook, we need to be able to register items of the form or form elements, form inputs, form properties, handle submit call, which handles a submit, and then the ability to get the values that are associated with this form. And then what I'm doing here is whenever I initialize this form, I set the default values based on the information that we've saved in our store, our wizard store. And all this says is use the state, get all the values and give me back all the values. We have our use history so we can navigate back and forth. We have our on submit handler, which I'll, I'll cover when we actually talk about submitting the form, but let's hop down to the form. So right here at the top, we have our progress bar. And so what we're doing here is we're getting the values out of the store for our property progress. And then we're gonna set our progress bar to that. So of course, in step one, there's nothing because we haven't started any, we haven't, we haven't started anything. So this progress value is zero. The progress needs to be between zero and one. So what I do is I take the progress value and I divide it by a hundred and then I get the percentage and that's how I update the progress bar. Um, then we have our form. Like I said, we'll cover the submit later. We have our basic Ionic components. The interesting thing here is the the registering for the registering for reactive form. I'm just keeping it simple. You provide the name of the property, and then if it's required or not, there's a bunch of other options you can add on here. So for example, instead of just saying required true, you can actually put a message here that you want on an error. Down here, all I've done is I've just hard-coded a message. Um, you could have uh, different messages based on each form by just setting it here when you register the element. And then as for the error information, there's a there's an errors object that you get off of your form state. Where is it? So off of your form state from reactive form, there's an errors object. And what I'm doing is I'm checking each one of my properties. So for full name, I'm saying, do I have an error for full name? If so, then display field is required. And that's basically duplicated for all of the fields. So you can see it's done here for my full name. It's done for age. And then at the end, once you've entered your fields, you hit submit. So I have my button type submit. Everything's wrapped in a form. It calls this on submit handler. And what this handle submit does is if there's any errors in the form, it will not call my on submit function. But if there are no errors, then it calls form submit. It calls my on submit function. And then inside of here, I get my data and my data basically looks like my interface for form step one. And then I update my store. So I'm setting the progress because I know when I go to the next page, I'll be one third done. So I'm setting it to 33. I could probably calculate this based on the number of, um, steps so I can keep instead of keeping progress I can just keep track of steps and kind of derive it but I just put 33 in just for this example and then what I'm doing is I'm assigning the values in my store based on the data that I got from my form and so I get my full name and I get my age and then I assign it I have my form filled I click next and I push to step two so if we move to page two step two there's nothing really new here. It's just duplicating pretty much what I've done in step one. So I'm not really going to go into any, I'm not going to really spend any time here. Cause like I said, the only thing that's different here is that you can see on submit, I set my progress to 66, which is two thirds. And so let's do this. And then I click next. Also one last thing. The reason why the back works is that on submit, I'm updating my store with the most recent data. And then you can see on every page, I'm just getting my state out of the store and setting my default value. So that's how come when we move back and forth, I'm able to keep um, the values that were entered previously. And now if I go to my last page, step three, once again, same as usual, but it's a little bit different because the Ion checkbox, you can't just register it the way that um, 
you register the input form. So what we're doing is we're listening for this ion change event that gets triggered when the user checks the box. And what we're doing is off of this event object, we can get the detail information and we can determine if it is checked or not. And if it is checked, then we set the value to true. And this value, terms accepted, comes from our store. One of the values that we have here is terms accepted. And since our, let's go, we're on step three. And since step three, is we're telling it for our form is to use form values and, and our form values include step one, step two, step three. This terms accepted can be set as a property on the form. And then we register it. So it's on the form and we set it's required to true. And we duplicate the exact same thing here for the privacy accepted. So the main difference here is we're listening to an event and updating the value that's associated for this element, as opposed to it just being handled itself by a React. And so then on next, we get to the last page. And if we look at the confirmation page, all we're doing is we're getting the information out of the store and then we're just kind of rendering it on the page. And that's basically it. Not much more to say. Once again, all the source codes available on the GitHub. The link will be included in the video. I uh, hope you found this enjoyable. Always please make sure you like, subscribe, share with your friends, and leave comments on additional content you'd like to see. Thanks. Bye.